Hey guys, it's Amy with 804 Sycamore. Thank you so much for checking out my channel. This particular video is all about how to install barn door hardware. It was very intimidating for me at first, but going step by step and breaking it down, double, triple check, checking measurements and making sure we had all of our tools out ahead of time and all the parts ready to go, um, it just made it so much easier. So this video will go step by step we discuss measurements, we talk about all those details that um, we would have loved to have known before we started this project. This, um, the barn door hardware has soft clothes, which we absolutely love, but that was a little confusing to me. So don't worry, we cover that part and explain the actuator and how to attach it, where to attach it, all that good stuff. So let's get going. Give me a thumbs up if this video is helpful or you like it and uh, leave me your comments. Thanks so much. Okay, so the very first step you have to take is you have to find out where the rail will be installed. And that's before the header board, which we're doing right now. So what you have to do is you have to take the height of your door and you have to add one and three quarter inch. And that shows you where the rail will be installed. That way you can set the header board where it needs to be so that the rail hits about the middle, okay? Once you know where the header board needs to be, we just tacked it up using brad nails. Um, it saved our arms, you know, when we're drilling and adding screws. So after you know that, then I found the studs in the wall and I marked where all the studs were. We want to make sure that our header board is in every stud across the um, span of the wall. That way it adds that extra security for the rail, which is not going to be necessarily installed into the studs. When I marked the studs, I also went ahead and marked three quarter inches from each edge because I want my screws to be um, symmetrical and lined up. I don't want crooked screws. So three quarter inch from the top, three quarter inch from the bottom, all the way across. And here's a close up showing you, I used my carpenter square to get those three quarter inch marks. And then I just wanna make sure that I move my drill gun to two and the drill option, and then make sure the bit is smaller than the screw. And I put a piece of tape so that I only drilled in as far as I needed to um, and you're just going to go ahead and drill those pilot holes all the way across. It will make sure that your header board doesn't split or crack. Um, it's just one of those things that makes a huge difference. Okay and here is a close-up showing that I drill all the way to the edge of the painter's tape and then I stop and you just want to try to drill in as straight as possible and then I just follow up with my three inch screw so for these three inch black screws they're wood screws and they're self drilling but we still do the pilot hole just to make sure that my header board doesn't crack or split and these particular screws came with their own bit um, and so that makes sure that we're not going to um, over drill and um, drill out the head, which is really nice. Um, make sure your drill gun is changed back to one. And I like to start with about a seven or eight torque and then adjust from there. It just really depends how hard your two by fours are, um, but you don't want to skip a beat. So. At this point, we are going to mark all of our spots to install the rail. So we're measuring from the floor all the way up to the header. And this is the measurement that we determined from the beginning. So you should have written it down and make sure that you're using that same measurement. It is the door height plus one and three quarters inch. And what we're going to do is we're going to just make our way all the way across the header and mark um, those spots all the way across because um, our next step is to draw a line connecting all the spots and this helps us to make sure that our rail is perfectly level and straight and 
and it just makes the next steps much more easy. So um, if you are measuring from carpet to the top, I just placed um, a very thin piece of cardboard to help me get it straight and flat so I wasn't pressing into the carpet. I just want to make sure that I was getting the um, same measurement all the way across. So that was just one of the things that we did um, that hopefully it could be helpful for somebody else. So go ahead and mark your spots all the way across. For this step, it helps to have two people. Um, you want to make sure that the level is level and straight and it can be kind of tricky marking your pencil line so having someone to hold it is a huge help so we held the level up to all of our markings and drew a pencil line maybe this is overkill but we really want to make sure that when we held the rail up to the header board we want to make sure that it was perfectly straight across the entire way um, we didn't want to have to figure out to mark just where the holes were. So the hardware that we purchased, we purchased the seven foot hardware, which came in two rails and they connect in the center. And so again, having two people with do this part helps. We held up the rail, we each had a level and we lined up the line through the center of the holes in the rail. And then we just drew a circle around the hole um, and that helped us to know exactly where we needed to drill our pilot holes to attach this rail to the header board. So when we put the rail up on the header board we removed the soft close and when we removed it we were careful to set it in the order that we removed it because we want to make sure that we put it back on exactly how we took it off and we wanted to put the soft close on back onto each rail. So this is um, a close up of attaching that soft close exactly the way it came onto the rail uh, because next we are going to install the rail to the header board. And there are spacers if you're wondering, um, you know, that the, the soft close sticks out a bit, no worries. It, there are spacers that pull the rail away from the header board. So these are large lag bolts and we ended up using um, a pretty big drill bit but not too big because we wanted to make sure um, that it was a big enough pilot hole to not split the wood um, but not too big right so make sure your drill gun is set to two and the drill setting and then you're going to go ahead and pilot drill pilot holes um, across your header board. Okay, so once your pilot holes are drilled, you're going to go ahead and add your screw attachment. Make sure you change it back to a 1 for um, screwing, and then I like to change the torque about to an 8. That's a good starting point. And then you're going to put the spacer behind the rail, line up your lag bolt. And uh, my husband went ahead and took care of this part. It takes a little bit of uh, muscle. And we made sure that our rail was level, you know, because things can shift, even though we marked our holes level. And it, this is the part where you're installing your rail with the soft close already attached. I gotta say with the first half of the rail up, I was feeling pretty good. It was, it's coming along. We haven't made any mistakes. It's level, um, no wood splitting. It's going along good. So um, again, two hands help to keep the rail level. And then the spacer goes behind, lined up. And then you get that lag bolt in there. And then you just gotta screw in all of your screws that come with the hardware. Here's a close-up so you can see how to line up. And once you get it set in there, just keep it level and then drill um, straight through.
Okay, here is part two. We are going to add the hangers to the door. Um, you wanna go ahead and find the middle of your one by four because we want the hangers to be on center on both sides. And then from the top of the door down to our very first hole on the hanger is one and nine sixteenths inch. Um, this is very important. If you don't do this correctly, you won't have enough space between the wheel and the top of the door. Um, if you have too much space, the door can um, be pushed off of the rails. So one and nine sixteenths inch is correct. We went ahead and did a test using two by fours. Um, we read some reviews that indicated this may not be correct, but it is indeed correct. One and nine sixteenths inch from the top of the door to that first hole. So when you mark your holes, my husband went ahead and used a smaller um, drill gun because he wanted it centered. He, he really wanted to make sure that the hangers were on perfectly. So he drilled a smaller guide hole first and then he used um, the large bit. And this bit is actually like exactly the size of our bolts and scr our, our screws. So um, I, I would say it would be okay to go a little bit bigger on the drill bit. Um, we had to go ahead and use a ratchet to get those screws pulled through but that just means there's no wiggle room and that these are in securely. So there's a close up of that. He's guiding um, the larger bit. He just wants to make sure that it's perfectly centered. Uh, make sure you have somebody eye this part and try to drill straight down because you don't want your screws in crooked. And so once you have both of your um, screws drilled, then we took a ratchet to pull the screw through um, from the back, we pulled it through the front. Um, if your pie, if your holes are a little bit larger, you may just be able to slide it in, but ours were too tight to um, pull it through or twist it in by hand. It was it was actually that tight, so um, the ratchet just made it easy to get it through, and they went in perfectly straight, and it worked out for us. But this was maybe an extra step for some. You can see that we pulled each screw all the way through to the front and then we just go ahead and add the hanger, the washers, and the bolts. And um, to tighten those bolts we again just use the same ratchet that we used to get the screws pulled all the way through. So the ratchet holds the bolt on the back side and then we just tighten up the bolt on the front side. And and this was nice. We you know, we didn't mark up any of the black hardware and we made sure to get a tight fit. Once your hangers are on, go ahead and get a helper, hang your door on the rail um, because next we are going to add the safety bumpers, the end of the rail stopper, and the actuators. The position of our door stopper is obviously right at the end um, because this is the end of our wall. But if you have a wall that continues on, your rail may go um, out farther than necessary. So what you can do is you can put this stopper wherever you want and then use the um, screws to just tighten it on. It comes, the hardware comes with this and this makes sure that the door can't slide all the way off the rails. Okay, so for me, this was the trickiest part, figuring out where the actuator needs to be installed. Now the actuator gets attached to the top of the door. There is one for the left side soft close and one for the right side soft close. So my husband is holding the actuator at the top of the door and he's seen where it trips the soft close and he's marking it with a pencil because once it trips the soft close, that's when the door totally slows down um, and that's how it works. So once you marked your two spots, you gotta take the door down again and then we're gonna go ahead and install the actuators. We're gonna go ahead and drill a pilot hole. He's lining it up with the pencil lines, he's eyeing it and he's just gonna get that first hole started and then once we have the, the first screw into the actuator, then we're gonna level it up and make sure to get the actuator on square 
Um, and that's when we use our carpenter square to just make sure that it's on there nice and straight. It probably isn't that important that it's perfectly straight, but why not? So again, go ahead and pilot, do, drill your pilot holes, and then go ahead and tighten your screws to get your actu both actuators in place. For our door, I think it's important to note how close our actuators are to each other, which means we only ended up using one of the um, bumpers. And what the bumper does is, um, here I am installing it. The instructions say to install it three quarters inch from the edge of the door. And what it does is it makes sure that if the door is ever pushed out, um, that it won't come off the rails. Um, However, if we were to put the bumper on the left or right side of the actuator, well, the bumper would then trip the soft close. So um, one was enough, and, um, and we're also going to have a wall guide that keeps our door in line, and so we feel like that's two steps. Um, our kids are old enough to know not to just shove on the door, so um, we just used one of the bumpers. And here's a close-up shot of that actuator slowing down, and um, we're good to go. So now I'm measuring uh, 36 inches up from the floor to where I'm going to put the middle of the door handle. This is a standard height. I also use painter's tape to mark the center of the handle. Um, and I'm finding the center of the, the framing there. And then I'm going to mark my spots. I just want to make sure that handle is on, um, on the center and in the right spot for like a comfortable opening. And in the description, I will go ahead and give links to the exact hanging hardware we used and the door handles that we used um, when we were making the door, which I have a video for constructing this door. We did notch out a finger pull for the other side because you can't have a handle on the back side. It will scrape your wall. Um, so if you're curious about how to open the door from going up the stairs, Go ahead and click on the link how to build a barn door and you can see exactly how we notched out the finger pole. Um, otherwise, there are links to all the hardware we used and as you can see, I just found my, my measurements, um, I marked my spots, I'm going to drill those pilot holes because I don't want to crack my brand new barn door. And once your pilot holes are drilled, then you can go ahead and screw in your door handle and you're all set. And here's a shot of half of our bonus space upstairs to show you exactly where the barn door is situated in the space. And we absolutely love it. It helps to block out some sound. It gives privacy to guests who visit us. And um, it's just, it's a perfect way to solve the issue of the top of the stairs opening. So if you like this video, we'd love a thumbs up. You can ask questions, leave comments for me. I will answer it and there are links in the description. So be sure to subscribe if you like DIY and decorating inspiration and projects, and we'll see you next time.